Hey guys, I'm so glad you're plugging in with me today. I'm going to Acts chapter 17, and I'm going to read verse 28. This is Paul the Apostle in the great city of Athens in Greece. A big, booming, capital, amazing cross-pollination of people with so many perspectives and viewpoints. The Roman Empire is at its zenith at this point. It's now declining. And Paul is responsible to carry over what happened to him on the road to Damascus, he being the young uh, Jewish mind that grew up and, and developed his intellect and was a Roman citizen and had prestigious pedigree and and then was persuaded that with his zeal for his Jewish faith, he should stop this following of Jesus. He didn't understand him to be the Messiah up to this point until the road to Damascus where God visited upon him and provided revelation to him and on one hand opened his eyes and the other hand scales formed over his eyes. So he actually was blind spiritually until the lights went on. And now he's in Athens and he's carrying what happened to him to them. With And his hope is, man, if you just act on what I'm about to tell you, it's going to change your world for eternity. It's going to secure a peace that passes understanding. You're going to be saved from your sins, which no other philosophy could, would even attempt to try to cover. Uh, but Jesus sacrifice paid the penalty for humanity's sins and he says to them in him we live and move and exist even as some of your own poets have said for we also are his children king james says we're the offspring of god and paul bothered to read what the literature was amongst the Athenian poets and in order to relate to his audience. And we that have embraced Jesus, we read the Bible as our, it's our guide. It's a faithful, reliable guide for our faith, for our conduct. Uh, it's a lamp to our feet and it's a light to our path. Now, the cross is to those who are perishing foolishness. So there are there are people that now think we have to sh we have to throw off the cloak of religion, which is you know basically uh, superstition. It's mythology. It's not its basis is not in logic. You know that kind of thing. And throw we we, we I know it'll be hard, but you got to lay it aside if we're going to advance. Well, my view is that would be a gross. Uh, huge, tragic step backwards when the Bible says, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. Not just draw near to religion or the idea of God, but that he is our source. He's the center of the universe. He's really someone to pay attention to. And Paul breaks it down in three points. In him, number one, we live Number two, we, we move. And number three, we exist. Or King James says we have our being. I like the way the King James says it because it's sort of trippy. It's like uh, I have my being in him. <laughs> you know, it's because that terminology is not in modern usage. It flexes your brain to think about it a little deeper, I think. But in him we live. I'm a real appreciator of life. Life is for living, and it's a privilege. And those of us who have hit pockets of depression, I know people who have entertained thoughts of suicide, which is like the termination of life. It's really not a good idea. I heard somebody say years ago, it's a long-term solution for a short-term problem. And uh, boy, it's, it's morbid, really, to even... I, I just want to say, don't go there. And, and I want to be sensitive, though, the devil, who is the one who comes to steal, kill, and destroy, is really the opposite of in him we live. He, he is a depleter. He's a diminishing being. 
and he's a thief. And I don't want anything to steal your joy. And I feel like this is a real joy producing word right here, this verse that Paul's actually using it evangelistically to try to tell the the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers and the debaters, you know, the people that are pretty intelligent, they're educated, they're accustomed to Plato, Aristotle, Socrates, you know, those kinds of thoughts that were moving and molding the, the Roman Empire. He comes in as this monotheistic Jewish man that has information about the carpenter from Nazareth. Only he ends up being so much more. He is the life giver. He's the one that moves us. And we're going to talk about that tomorrow. And in him, we have our being. It's, he's the, the furnisher of existence and a good one at that. So I'm, I'm telling you, Jesus is the, the life giver. Um, John chapter 14, verse 7, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, the life. I knew an Indian man that got saved by the truth, part of the way, truth, and the life. That verse was the verse that turned my life around when I heard it. Because I thought, well, there are many paths to God. And the man that was witnessing to me, like Paul was witnessing to the Athenians, telling him about how Jesus is the life changer. Uh, he told me Jesus is the life. And, you know, you think, what a life, what a life. Well, the Christian life, when understood and correctly embraced and then walked out, is absolutely an adventure. And I want to encourage you to remember that. Stay in love with him. Stay focused on him. Stay in the Bible. Stay consistent in church. And I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.